back really, being really young, I guess everybody kind of has that same story of just kind of they probably gravitated towards art maybe some people didn't but you know i definitely kind of always felt like art and gravitating towards art even though i wasn't too sure if i wanted to have a career in or what the story but it was definitely just kind of one of the, the subjects that i always kind of lent into so um again our, our school system Ireland, is a little bit different we have kind of junior and then we have a senior and then in the senior you kind of specialize a little bit more art was one of the things i specialized in and then after that we have like what well, it's like university so um but to get into university, you have to do a portfolio course. So I took a portfolio course and that was my first real exposure to like, let's say the art world, the art world kind of, um... Did you close yours? So, um, yeah, so, so I did a year portfolio course. So the year portfolio course was just to get into essentially an art college. And the year portfolio course, I did a selection of design, photography, web design, all that kind of stuff. And that kind of got me into doing a, uh, just a kind of degree initially. So like, uh, so it was just a straight, a pretty straight up design communication degree. But in the background, as this was happening, I was really into graffiti from about the age of 15 to about 20. So that was a massive influence. So that, but at that stage, being into graffiti wasn't, graffiti wasn't as mainstream it wasn't as like you had your banksies or like of lots of friends here in Birmingham like who who make a shitload of money as graffiti writers like that wasn't an avenue then you know so it was more of a creative side project and then also me and some other friends uh I was really into skating I was really into taking photographs and I was also me and another friend had a it was kind of start of the web that's how old I am it was when the web was kicking off uh two of my friends and myself we uh, started a little web design company because they were they were uh, coders and developers. I was a designer, so uh, even from early we had um, we had a uh, we had a web design studio, which that was when I was was in college and stuff in university. That was kind of what I was working doing. So uh, yeah, but also I was working in bars and nightclubs and promote like just kind of your regular stuff. I ran loads of techno nights. Then later on. Um, became a club promoter and stuff. So I was kind of involved in the music scene as well. So even though even though it seems like this kind of linear path, all these things I was doing when I was younger from like working in design and web stuff, like early web, web like this was when web was just HTML and CSS and working in and doing graffiti and organize that stuff. And then in being involved in promotion and club nights and stuff, all those things kind of just uh, led into really where I am now. I do a lot of big, just, just massive global launches for artists and festivals. I do a lot, even though the work isn't on there, I do a lot of work with Red Bull and Red Bull UK and launching their festivals like Culture Clash and um, just these other city festivals. Like, you know, I do a lot of work at Red Bull Ireland, Austria, um, and just, uh, which is work I need to put up there. But like, they're just massive encompassing projects, which in some ways they do touch upon everything I've kind of led up to it for the last 20 years, you know? So everything from doing a big outdoor mural, we're just like, yeah, we know who this is, what's going on here to launching a big online campaign, you know? Yeah. Sounds to just being aware of all the media channels and also being aware of the artists, the music, the venues, all that stuff. So, um, yeah. So like, uh, yeah. So, so, so yeah. So that, 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 that that's it. So like, um, just uh, yeah, so that's kind of that's that was, that was the initial the, the initial start to it. But then the uni the, the the university I went to that was quite um like that was quite uh, techy. So like it was a lot of architects there and interior designers and things like that, CGI people. So um, you know, it wasn't as much as a f formal art education as uh, as you know um, I would have imagined. Uh, and then when I came to England. That's kind of when I started to realize that, like, you know, it's a little bit different as far as people who've been to art college and how they think and stuff. But to be honest, I think um, going to a more technical college, I had the skills. So I found it quite easy to get a job in a workplace, you know. So, like, I got a job as a junior as soon as I left in a pretty good studio. So, uh, purely because I was just useful and I worked in a printers and I had a good knowledge of web and a good knowledge of just retouching and photos and magazine design you know I kind of just I kind of just had been working doing it all really you know so so before was that in Birmingham Johnny that, 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 that was in Ireland that was in Ireland so yeah so I studied I studied in Ireland and then I just came to England for one year 
uh, for to do to complete uh, the degree in Wolverhampton. Okay. So yeah, so I did a diploma in Ireland, and then I could stay in Ireland for two years more and do a degree, or I could come to England and short kind of like just do do it quicker. So I said, just I'm going to come to England, just do it quicker. So uh, and I think I knew as well a lot of the studios I wanted to work for were here. You know, in Ireland, it's, it's the scene is getting better and better, but um, like a lot of the uh, a lot of the studios that you want to work for, like uh, were, were based in England. So it was just it was just um, yeah. I think now it's not as important where you are. I've seen studios from all over the place now popping up. You know, you see amazing font foundries from like Cambodia and shit places places you'd never imagine. You know, like there to be a design scene, but like uh, even like Vietnam. I was in Vietnam like uh, a year or two ago and like uh, I had a, a, a look into just a design scene there and this, there's one or two design groups there that are just really amazing you know they're like just like you know they're they're like you know world standard you know like there's a lot of uh, so I think I think now geography isn't as important you yeah know, you can... I think there's a lot of people moving away from that that traditional concept that London you know New York Paris that's you know, very lazy yeah, well, yeah. that's how it used to be isn't it so, but it's it was I mean, yeah, I think that's that's kind of an important thing. You know, I think even the years ago when Zionist Republic set up there in Sheffield, it, like that was a curveball for them to be outside of that Soho Square. You know, I think everything really kind of like revolved around London and, and certain specific areas in London. I think in design, it's becoming decentralized, but I definitely know we do a lot more film and video and like uh, now, you know, just the way the nature of uh, the way the industry is going, let's say like, this is more video, more film, more, more, more like uh, on, online motion moving things. But I have found London is still quite centric with regards to video and stuff. Like it all just seems to happen there. Like directors all go there, all the agency reps are there. Like it's still, that's something I think that needs to be decentralized a little bit. But I guess, you know, it's just the way things are. It's just, it's just a big city. And, yeah. you know, but, but design, I think design is, Design is quite flexible, you know, it's just saying, and the tools just getting easier and easier and cheaper and cheaper to just to be a super designer, just to do, you know, it's like it's the, the act, ease of access just to get in Procreate, Creative Suite, and a good good Mac that's going to do the business. Like, that's so I've, I've, I've found that there's now so many more disciplines than when I first started that you can work with. You can work with a huge brand, but it might just be on a, a, a 1% yeah. sort of project, you know, their bigger output. You know, it could just be something very, say, talking about skate, yeah. skate culture. Nike might do something, for instance, that want to work with a, a very uh, small agency that spe specifically works in a certain type of animation or design. And yeah. Then, you know, they work on that with that team, but there's still the wider output gets put out through the larger agencies in the, in the bigger cities. And I think that's quite a nice balance if, if that work can be shared. I think as well, like, yeah, it's easier to, like, those people are more specialist. And, you know, I think that's where, like, you know, kind of what I do as an art director is, like, I've just, I did run a blog as well for, for a long time. Just got out of Dark Club, had, like, 40-odd thousand uh, followers. It was just a Tumblr. So I've always been really into that idea of curation and just kind of, like, even my Instagram, just, like, I don't really post on it, but it's, like, 7,000 people of just an address book of people who are photographers or motion designers or CGI yeah. guys. I think that's where you know, good art directors and good campaigns come in where you kind of go, right, that type needs to be animated in that way. I know who's going to do this. Or, you know, we need a photographer in this kind of style. You know, like, uh, you, know, you, you know, that's kind of like, um, just, I think it's really good. And just, just just, the way it's just it's so easy to access people and stuff at the moment. Joe. But then yeah. again, it sure. has pluses and minuses because you got the, it's trickier yeah. to get cooked through and stuff and then to find the right people and then you got to start investing time in your socials. So it's a, uh, it's a, yeah. it's a weird it's a weird cycle, but I guess it's, it's better than it was before. It's a good view, uh, or good alternative look at not say how you want to maximise it on social. Because I think so many people think there's a one way of doing it across the board, but if you want to use it in a different way, that's that's there's nothing wrong with that. It's just no, one, totally one just, you. yeah. I just use my social media more as an address book, yeah. you know. Uh, but I do, you know, if a social media guru was to come to me and say, look, you're doing all these work with like. Ed Sheeran and all these people and like, you know, massive shows and huge citywide campaigns and stuff and you don't even post them on your socials, like, they'd probably kill me, you know? So yeah. I, do, yeah, I do need to get on that socials, but I'll, I'll more prefer, I prefer just doing the work and putting it out there. And really when you think about it, a lot of designers, this is for a lot of younger designers, um, they always kind of chase the, 
the admiration of their peers and other people in design groups and stuff. And really, that's not where the work comes from. Mm. Let's say you want to work uh, designing menus for coffee shops or you want to do some illustrations with coffee shops. Really, there's only 10 people you need to go after in your area. Or there's only 10 magazines, you know, to get to those right people. You know, instead of blanket bombing it out, just be a bit more specific on who you really want to work for. For yeah. me, because I mainly do work in the music industry and, and events, there's really only a few people I want to work with maybe a handful, 20 in the, in, in the UK who I need to get under the nose of. So, so get those people and just keep them people on site. You, know, you don't need to be, like sometimes you see some campaign for some night thing and it's like some art director, you've never even heard of him. He has like 10 followers on his, on his Instagram, but he's a Don, you know? So like, it's, it's, not all, it's not all about profile out there, you know? So it, it, it is to a degree and that really helps, but also it, it is about just, those individual connections and stuff, they're more important. And you're a network of people and working with people and like doing a good job and, and the job will be passed on to you the next time. You know, I think that's that's uh, that's key and really important, you know? And it's amazing how many times that that comes up, that that statement of just sort of saying, you know, being very personalized, building relationships with the people that matter, you know, yeah. as opposed to like you say, and everybody that I speak to within the industry that's been doing it for a long time, they all say the same thing. But there's still a preconception that you need to be, you know, getting a, a trillion likes just to feel some sort of. Uh, I, I, I had a Tumblr, even though I was tumbling other people's stuff. And like one time, Apple, I did like I did get a job with Apple um, through the Tumblr. They came to me, and it was a weird job. It was like uh, more when uh, they were launching a new MacBook. There was all these images to come up, and I was more just in there as a curator. So just working with them, just kind of curating all these cool images to flash up on the screen, like you know, in in the series of adverts. Well, that was the only one job that came to me from having a Tumblr that like got totally ranked as one of the top Tumblrs time and time again and had whatever thousand people like, you know, as soon as I post something, I just get thousands of retumbles and retweets. Yeah. Or uh, it can be quite impersonal as well. You know, kids who come into the work experience here and he has 10,000 Instagram followers, but, you know, he's still a junior designer, but like, you know, it's it's not a bad thing, but also it's not the be all and end all to just grow up social a social pro- profile. You know, yeah. so I think I think seeing it through once with Tumblr, MySpace, and stuff like that. You know, like well, definitely Tumblr. You know, you can waste a lot of time just trying to do that when you could just you could just get a great portfolio together and just call on the door of ten people. Yeah. You know, instead of kind of like you know wasting time just uh, creating socials. You know, that's, that's, that's not saying that. You know, there's people out there who do it really well as well. And there's people yeah. out there who really, you know, people like Mason London or other people like Connor Campbell or like people, some people out there just have amazing Instagrams and every day they're posting little behind the scenes and work stuff. And, you know, you can really make work to your advantage as well, you know. But, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, it's, it's a million ways you can do it. That's the thing in design. There's no, exactly. it's all there's no set way. There's no set way, you know. And that, and that is a hard thing someone's like to, for students, you know, there's, there, there is no real set way of doing it, you know, and you're, how I came into it, it's totally different to how Callum came into it or how Charlotte came into it. You know, she, she came in from a real fine art background and she's really into film. Callum came in from a more um, video background, you know, so, uh, you know, there's no, and now it's the, the disciplines are so overlapped now, you know, as well. So like half of what we do is motion, you know, at, at the moment we're doing this one big shoot and it's everything from production design to photographers to, you know, uh, we're going to have teaser videos and rollout and music videos and stuff. So it's all going to be, it's all so rolled into one, you know, when a campaign mm-hmm. launches, whoever that end user is going to see this on so many touch points. And for, for, for me, what I do or what we do as art directors, it's about just getting those touch points looking cohesive and getting those touch points just being like, if you see this ad for this album, it's, you know, or this festival or whatever, or this product, whatever we're doing, you know, it's just going it, to, it's, it's going to be part of that bigger campaign. Yeah. So just going back, at, right back to that first role, Johnny, when, you, when you're in Wolverhampton. Yeah, yeah. From that, from that position, how, where did the, the, your career sort of progress from there up to the launch of Adult Art? Um, so from there, I got a job in a place, I just did a work experience, I guess, because I knew I was in England, so I was like, right, in England, you just have the, you do have like, you are so lucky and so blessed in England. You know, I think when I do hear people complain about design in England or stuff, I'm just like, you don't know actually how lucky you have it. You know, you can go, you can just knock, you can just walk down and knock on the door at Pentagram if you wanted, you know, that kind of way. You can just 
it's you know it's so accessible over here compared to like a lot of the world as far as you know like i know we said that's changing but like it is so i had an idea of where i wanted to work a few places and to be honest i sent off my first portfolio to a place called fluid in Birmingham, and uh, they just gave me a, a placement and it was really cool and i just got on with everybody there and um then they i had a second part of my uh, degree to finish and I just did, did it as a negotiated project. So I worked on some live projects. So I worked on a festival branding for uh, Fierce Festival, who the guys, a performance art festival, who I'm still really good friends with. And uh, that was like over 10 years ago. That was one of my first projects, just gonna work on this performance art festival, which, um, you know, is an amazing festival and we did let's do some great stuff. And uh, that was my negotiated project kind of for the end of, um, for the end of my university. And then after that, they just gave me a job and it was mainly working in design for video games. So I did like, a, I worked as a designer art director for, for video games. So loads of ones from all the, from um, like all the zombie ones. We did a lot of work with like a lot of Japanese games. We did work with Capcom, Konami, uh, EA. We did like, you know, just a lot of the big, big games. You know, it was a bit of a golden moment in video game design where like CGI hadn't totally, like now everything's CGI. Everything's like just in the box, in the computer. Whereas it was that weird point of like in-game animation was still quite, you know, look quite boxy and, and, you know, the low poly and stuff. So you couldn't really use it on the cover. So if there was, for example, a car racing game, they probably would have photographs of cars on the cover or an illustration as opposed to now, which is all going to be CGI, you know? So it was that in that kind of golden era where like, it was still quite design led, you know, it was still quite design led and, and like, it was quite experimental as well. You know, they, they would just let you do whatever. Like we worked on like Juice and eat a lot of the FIFA ones and like, you know, some of the designs that did get through for video games, you know, they looked, they, they were quite good, you know, and looking at video game design now, it's, 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 it's just hero character or hero shot of something, a few explosions. It's not, it's actually not as creative. Whereas before it was a little bit more in the line, in the vein of, what it'd be like to design an album or what it'd be like to design a book cover. And, um, you know, but the Fluid, the company I was working for, they had worked with Sony PlayStation for a long time. And they also had a lot of, a long history in music as well. I think they had a history in music and then they went from the music to, um, uh, I, they, they, went, they went from the, they, they went from, they went from music to transition into video games. So, uh, but then they kind of just stayed working in and around video games and uh, they went on to like uh, do bits of music and stuff as well but they didn't go full on on the video game stuff but I, I stayed there for seven years and I kind of worked with two art directors one guy who used to be at Output and another guy Lee who now lives in Japan he's a photographer works at Rafa and stuff and I, like, I was totally the junior art director and uh, so like it was it was great working with those two guys but at the same time you know, my ideas were always like, you know, the, I was always the one pick, picking up the pieces and just making their ideas good. Or, you know, you'd have an idea, idea it, like in, in a meeting, just be like, yeah, sweet, we'll take that, you know? So like, I was very much the junior for a long time there, you know, but it was a great experience. And like the two guys who ran it, uh, Neil and uh, James, they were like, it was, you know, they, they, they just had a great work ethic and they were just, you know, they just did stuff right. And like, you know, even though they're not like an agency, people, loads of people would have heard of, they still ran a really tight ship as far as just being on time, just showing up, just like all that kind of stuff, you know, because you work with so many agencies, so many people, especially in music that like, it's so, it's so loose, you know, the kind of way some guy might be a video director, but he runs a yoga studio or something, you know, it's kind of like, it is just the way things are now, you know, but they were just really meticulous on being in, being on it, pitches, invoices, timesheets, all that stuff, which, which was really invaluable, you know, but I, I would say, I learned so much amazing stuff there, but also if I could do it again, I probably wouldn't have stayed there for as long. I would have maybe went to a big ad agency just to see how that machine works. and maybe worked in a few other places to see, to see how those, how those um, agencies will, you know, uh, see how those agencies works, you know, cause I've only ever seen the machine from one, from one angle. So like, um, you know, I think it's, I think it's good if you're starting off, you know, maybe not for your job, but definitely for a work experience try and do a few, you know, you might go, right, I love the motion, I love the animation here, I love, 
I love how these guys do things. Or I like just being in the thick of influencer marketing, you know, like, and just, 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 you know, so, and you'll find, you know, what your, your passion is as well. You know, like you might think that, oh, I really just love production or I really love set design. And you might just work at an agency that just does a bit of that. And you're like, oh, I really want to pursue that, you know? So I would say at the start, even though you're probably thinking, I want to just get my teeth into a job. And, you know, it's easy for me to look back in hindsight and say, I would like to have done that. But I think at the start, it's definitely a time where you can, if you have an option to do two or three placements or two or three, three things, like um, just take them, just, 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 you know, experience it and build your network. And, you know, like, uh, you know, like people who you meet in work experience are come in, like might be people who you work with in the future and stuff, you know, like you just got to be really cool to everybody, you know. Like, There's a lot to be said for that, though, isn't there? The idea that we get told, or, or tradition sort of says that you stick in a role and you see it out the whole of your life. The, and, the, you know, the idea that you jump from place to place can seem a bit, um, you know, a, a bit self-centred. But I think it's really important to, you know, to see, like you say, from inside different machines, so to speak, you know, small yeah. agencies, you know, niche agencies, big players, all these sorts exactly. of things. It allows you to understand and form an opinion where you want to fit. Yeah. And you know, and you're you're often you'll see, you'll see stuff, you know, like like that agency first agency I worked with, it was very much like owner operator kind of thing. So he just ran it his way, you know, yeah. and it was a really good way and he, he did, did really well. But like you do, you do see then other, let's say tech agencies that you work with, like I've been really lucky to, to work with like massive artists and massive uh, brands, you know, like, um, and it's just good to see behind the curtain and how they roll, you know, yeah. just to see like, I think especially Red Bull, I just they're just an absolute machine just as far as bang, bang. Ooh. Really great people, just great art directors. And then you're and then and then let's say with Sony or I don't know, did a big project with uh, One Direction for their 10 year thing. We're working with a great web team. Just to be in with a great web team and just be like, right, this is how we're doing it. This is, you know, to see their structure of how they do stuff, you know. So like it's it's just always a learning curve, really. Just uh with seeing how other people are doing it, you know? So like- Yeah, yeah. and you get to see a lot of different processes, don't you? Because again, I don't know about you, but I've always found through through my education, I always was told that there is just sort of one way of doing things. That, yeah, you've nah, got to nah. do it like this, you've got to do it like that. And yeah, it's got yeah. to like, your mind a bit. No, I told you, everybody has their own way of doing it and stuff. And it's just like, yeah. but also find your way, you know, the kind of way you yeah. could be somebody who just likes to work on the ideas for two or three days. And then next thing you just boom, knock it out at the end. Or you can be somebody who works on three or four pieces and then you just pick your final one. It's whatever way you know you feel works for you and stuff yeah. as well, you know. It also, it also evolves, doesn't it? You, know, you change your, you, yeah, you know. yeah, yeah. And you get like, as as you progress, you get more confident in like like at the start, I would do, I'd do probably like 10, 20 ideas, and I was always just like, trying to churn out as many ideas and concepts for like this album or whatever. But then now I'm a bit more confident that I might have five or ten, and then out of that five or ten, I'm like, nah, these are my solid six, you know, kind of way, mm -hmm. and I'm not to just kind of work that into my solids solid uh, ideas and solid bits, you know, kind of way. So like, um, yeah, yeah, it's just, it's, it's just a learning one. But also like technologies and stuff, we're getting new, newer technologies all the time coming through, you know, like, and the way, the way design is always, design is just uh, always been influenced by the medium it's going to be put out on. So, you know, whether it's Facebook or Instagram or online video, or now we're having like really fast blast stuff like TikTok and, you know, kind of all this stuff. So, you know, how you're designing is going to change with the, the, the medium of how it's going to get put out there, mm. you know? So, um, you know, like years ago, it was all print and it was all about really nice pieces of, pieces of print and outdoor material. But now it's, it's, it's just as much about like, it's just as much about the social campaign, you know, it's, it's, it, you know, how this is going to land online, how we're going to do some short trailers for it how this is going to get taken up on, on, on socials, you know, that's just as important, you know? So like, um, it's always evolving and design it is always at the mercy of that to some way, you know, like your average designer is going to be working now in a role of probably being a social marketing person or, you know, something like that. That's going to be a lot of people's first roles in design mm. as opposed to years ago, your first role in design might have been in a print house, just, you know, proof and stuff for checking the artwork, you know, that kind of way. So like, uh, so, so, so things are changing with the technology, but it's only good stuff. You know what I'm saying? It's only good stuff. It's all these things are just great opportunities to tell that story as a bigger piece, you know, that kind of way. So like, 
you know, this one campaign we're working on now, we're going to try and get some teasers going off on Snapchat and do a little thing on, like a little, I can't say too much about it, but like, you know, you know, working all them into your campaign is great, you know, kind of way you have to have an understanding of that. And an employer is going to look for an understanding of the vision, of the line, of the, just, just the language of the day as well. You know, that's how stuff gets out there. Because most people are going to come to you with a problem as a designer. As much as you get wrapped up that we're artists and all this shit, most people are going to get their money from somebody turning up at the door going, I have this product of this album or of this festival and I need to get this shit out to as many people as possible mm -hmm. and you're going to do it, you know, and that's it. And they want that to get out. They want the word to get out there as far as they can, you know. Yeah. And if you're clever with it now, just getting the right person to retweet it or the right thing. It's just like you look at another absolute fucking travesty, but Fire Festival. Yeah. They just paid Kendall Jenner what a couple of million just to do that one tweet, and that was it. That was their whole marketing campaign yeah. done, you know. So, like, you know, that's an extreme case. Yeah. But you know, if you utilize the tools that are out there in the right way, you can get a lot of bang for your book back on clout. Yeah, and also those things have been. I think there's a common misconception that I'll say influence is a you know a modern phenomenon, but. I always remember seeing an advert by George Best, the advertising sausages, you know, in the 60s. You know, it's the same sort of mentality. You get the right people involved to promote your thing, then hopefully it'll go a long way. Whether, whether or not it was him, George Lois, that guy, the old school art director, I don't know if you've ever heard of him. Yeah. He's an amazing art director. He's wrote quite a few books. He was one of the first people, he says, to... Uh, he says a lot of shit, you know, and, like, yeah. he's getting old now, so it's easy for him to... Most of his counterparts are probably dead, so it's easy for him to, to, to tell history from his point of view. But he was one of the first people, he got, I think, Andy Warhol and um, Mike, not Mike Tyson, or like uh, Muhammad Ali or some shit in on some... Uh, he was the first person to attribute like uh, a person's personality to the product. Do you know what I'm saying? So like yeah. right now, you, now it just seems like a natural fucking solution to go, oh, I've got a fucking survival knife. I'm going to put Bear Grylls on that. You know, he's the face of that. He was one of the first people to have, like, I think he was, it was an ad for American Airlines and he was just there. Uh, I think he was trying to sell first class or something that you could be sitting next to anybody or whatever. I'm not too sure. But uh, he, he was the first person to start attributing, you know, the qualities of a celebrity, like, you know, kind of like, you know, the glamour of like, you know, Marilyn Monroe or the, the you know, like, or the artisticness of, um, you know, Andy Warhol and stuff. He was one of the first people to, to start making those links and start attributing you know, celebrities, personalities that will map onto the, how people envisage that product in society. Yeah. So, uh, I, th I, th I can't remember what it's called, but it's actually... Celebrity. Yeah. <laughs> so, so that was it, and that was like, that was way back in the day, yeah. Angling and tangling with famous people. So yeah, so like, that was like, so oh yeah, it was, it was Andy Warhol did uh, Soup. So I think it was around the time he was doing the soup cans. So that would have been a big moment in history, Andy Warhol doing the soup cans. So Campbell's just to go, yeah, fuck it, let's get Andy Warhol in the soup. Like, you know, that's that's kind of where it kicked off. And, and now here we are, like, you know, whatever. Like, yeah, I, I, I've, I've recently read the guy that started Nike's biography, um, Phil Knight, he's called. Oh, yeah, shoot up. Yeah, but I thought it was really interesting because the way that he talked about it, it was more a case of, it was more aspirational. It wasn't about trying to, and like today's yeah, yeah. it seems quite murky. They wanted people to wear their shoes that were the best athletes of the time. And, yeah. and it, it, it then led to hip hop stars and it then led to, you know, but in the, the original, the origin of that, of being somebody that they wanted their brand to be associated with, was all about, you know, people that were working hard, people that were, you know, driven. Yeah. That were, Just you know, exactly, yeah. And then that, that made children and younger people think, oh God, that's, He's like a hero, he's an icon, and you know, that's yeah, yeah, which, which, which now just seems like so logical, yeah. But at the time, like advertising was so different. If you look at advertising in the 40s, it was just like a little illustration of something, or it was just like you know, really, you know, we look back at like cigarette ads from the 40s and just go, Oh my god, they're so ridiculous. But that's kind of how advertising was, you know, like it was a really people were spoken down to, like, as in, like, you know, like you don't know what's good for you, we'll tell you what's good for you. So, it was, uh, yeah. so I think it was a real liberating thing to. to for that, that, that point in advertising, you know, so like, um, yeah, so yeah, so I think that's um, God, what we're, we're on a bit of a ramble there, like, uh, but yeah, I suppose, I, I, I guess, just uh, I think always just be aware of how the landscape out there is evolving, yeah, and they, and they need to sort of embrace it as well as fear it and sort of adapt, yeah, it. yeah, totally, totally, you know, what I'm saying, I think, 
but also don't get too hung up with it you know it's like uh you, you, you know like people are like oh yeah we're gonna drop an nft of this you know like you know like there's some people who are like you know okay cool like you could do it really right you know in that world like you know if you're a mad edm person or you're like you know i don't know if you're grimes because you're like you're in that whole fucking techie bitcoin world you know so it makes sense for grimes to do it but like you know, I seen one thing where a fucking Pele is going to release his greatest goals as a, as a as an NFT, and you're kind of going like, "Come on, that's just a cash in." Do you know what I'm saying? Where you can see other people that's right, you know, and, and it's a real good creative medium. Like, you know, um, so I think just just be, seeming authentic because I think now people just smell a money grab more yeah. than ever, and it could probably do more. Uh, you know, some people who are proper old they don't give a shit, but like, you know you just got to be careful of your brand as you're working through stuff as well, you know? Yeah. Okay, so. But I also think, Johnny, that the idea that a, a really, really well-crafted like, brand or an album cover like you do or, you know, campaign, that's oh, that's always going to be amazing. If it's well, well, well thought, yeah. Yeah. Also, yeah. This is also the thing, like, you know, good people will get work. Like, you know, there's not, I can't get enough good designers who are just, who are on point and you could leave a job with them and you could just be like right that's it that's sound you know what i'm saying like you know like if you're good and you can do do the shit like you know you'll you'll you know you'll you'll find work you know i don't think i don't think people need to worry too much there's a lot of work out there yeah. you know it's probably more work than people even know but you know sometimes you, you do just have to leave your ego at the door as well you know a lot a lot of the work i would have done i, I wouldn't I, I would never show, you know, kind of way. And a lot of the video game stuff I did was great. And it was great experience, but like, I never would really ever wanted to go into video game design. Do you know what I'm saying? I just enjoyed the process. It was a great learning experience and great to work in it. But like, you know, when you first go into an agency, you're probably gonna have to work on a lot of stuff you might not exactly, you know, not everybody's gonna land some job at Pentagram and just be working on exactly what they want to work at, you know? But then as it gets through, you might be like, oh, maybe I didn't want that anyway, you know, kind of way. I think, you know, like... Uh, it tends, think, to be, tends to be the people, all the people that I know that have been through agencies like that hate it by the time they've come out of it. And they they've yeah. just reject it because of the... For many reasons, not being close to clients, being just part of a chain, just yeah. doing little things. You know, you're basically a art, glorified art worker. And no, then, totally, totally. Because they, they, once you get up past a certain amount of people, you just have to put a system in place. I was lucky in that last agency I worked in uh, it was quite small, so I would be there when they'd be quoting up the job. I'd be there when they'd be artworking it. I'd be there when they'd be pitching it to the clients. So I was there at every step of the way. Whereas I definitely know if I was in a big ad agency like Green and Candy, I might have just been brought in for meetings, or I might have just been brought in for like artwork or whatever. You know, Can I, mm. you know, it's hard, it's hard to know. But I know as an agency grows, a, a structure has to be put in place. Purely because that's how it has to work. You know, you have to just, there has to be a structure there because if it didn't, everybody would just be having ideas and everybody wanted artwork stuff or everybody want to work on the great yeah. shit. You know, kind of way, everybody would probably want to go to the photo shoot and meet the artists, you know, kind of way. And nobody want to actually just sit there and put, put a bloody web plan together or, or a site map or, you know, like stuff like that, you know. So it's, uh, so those structures are there because. As an agency grows, it just has to be there, really. You know, just you know, and it's it's, it's not, it's just yeah, and it's, it's not the most conducive to creativity when people get just siloed off. And yeah. I think that's one thing I do think. I think there is a talk with it, like some of the guys from Real and Candy or something. I think it's one of them. He, he does say that it's one of their big things of like not trying to just silo people off or not trying to just trying to have that overlap but still keep everybody in their lane. And that's I think that's the hard thing when you're an agency, you know, and just like, Yeah, but when you when you grow with something like that, it doesn't matter what line of work it is, it's also really a business, isn't it? You know, it's got to, it has yeah, to yeah, 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 yeah. otherwise no, it just collapse. Yeah, no, you're not like I think a lot of art a lot of designers see themselves as as artists and stuff. And it's like it it is to a degree, but also to a degree, if you want to be an artist, you can just be an artist. You don't you don't have to work in that thing of design. But I think that's an even though it's really new at the moment, that whole crypto art and NFT thing, it's going through a bit of a boom at the moment. But like, that's definitely, like, I think that's a big, that's a big step, you know, I think in designer art people, like, you know, I work with loads of CGI people and loads of 3D people because we do so much video work and, uh, and a lot of those guys are now just selling their work just, just straight to, straight to consumers and straight to, they just bypass the whole gallery thing 
yeah. that whole snobbishness around the art world of all oh, everything has to be like in, in sculpture or like painted or like it has to be on a wall it has to be this mad print because the last decade or so everybody's been making amazing work in cgi programs in illustrator and procreate these people are just as much artists as they are before and now it's just like boom they're just direct to the consumer now a i think it's a gold rush at the moment and b i think you know it's only going to be so long before some big platforms do swoop in there and start getting their more in and stuff like but uh you know that's definitely it's definitely an interesting time you know definitely like that's 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 that's, that's a really and, and also in music you know there's disclosure have just done an nft drop and stuff and uh galantis just done a good one with matt, with matt um matt maitland from um big active he's a legend and then also there's another it was, there's another like jonathan zawada did one with flume where it was quite interesting just and it's just a it's just a little interesting space where an artist and a musician can collaborate and sell it direct to direct to a fan you yeah. know just uh you know like it's uh yeah interesting very well, very very early stores on that but what I, what I personally find really interesting in those sorts of platforms and those sort of concepts is that you're not just a designer to create something for a business to sell you can yeah. actually use your creativity to create those platforms to think of new ways to disrupt you know like say about galleries i mean in, in design, I hear the word disruption all the time, and it gets a little bit boring after a while. But yeah, yeah, there yeah. are certain areas of the industry that, that are, are ready to be changed and to be challenged and disrupted. And, oh, you know, in Kensington, you know, high streets in Kensington and Chelsea that have got million pound, you know, millions and millions of uh, artworks worth millions and millions of pounds individually. It just yeah. seems so antiquated and old fashioned in the world that we live in right now. That no, to totally. I think you know. All that shit's here to stay, man. I think yeah. you know. I don't. We're not going backwards, you know. Like, and then also people, people just hold like you know people. The the new school deal in apps and technology and their stores of value being digital, and we're just probably we're old school. I'm like nearly forty, so yeah. You know, I come from a world where people do just look at like that's a thing. That's where it X amounts, you know. But the younger generation. You know, I do think they, they're, they're, it's a lot easier for them to get their head around. That's that. And that's where the X amount, you know, for mm -hmm. if it's, you know, if it's, if it's that one of one or digitally authenticated, but um, again, it's, er it's early doors on that one, you know, who's to know how that's going to happen. You could all just go up in flames tomorrow, but I do think it's a definitely interesting concept, you know, and yeah. I do think there, there is just this whole lineage of art world that like, it's got so many gatekeepers and this and that, and you got to have all these shows. You got to like, you know, like if you're a fine artist, it's a bit the same design. Unless you've gone to RCA or you've gone to, you know, like uh, one of the top two or three fine art colleges, you know, really on your resume, that's where you need to have been to. And then you need to have had a show with these other people and you need to have done X, Y, and Z. You know, like there is a, there, there, there is a lineage in a way you get into that stuff and you need to be represented by all these certain certain like dealers and all this kind of yeah. shit like and that's just kind of bypassed that straight away it's like boom if you like this stuff man you can just buy this straight away you know kind of way and it's been yeah. definitely been interesting you know and like i think a lot of the art world is probably just probably shitting it because there's so many yeah. million, so many people in there and now this the money is just going direct to the artist you know so it's um yeah it's interesting but they're not these these galleries though they have so much money and they can move in in a Spotify style, you know, they'll move in yeah. and they'll, because you're already, you're seeing like the good places to sell that art. Like I'm totally on a fucking weird crypto art talk now, but the places, to sell, the place to sell that art are already like, they're already like, like it's foundation or super rare. There's already a, a vetting process to get into those, onto them ones where you could realistically start selling shit for big money, you know? Yeah. So is that going to just, as it goes on is that gatekeeper that's going to like uh just become more so you know but it's definitely it's definitely more open than than previously so yeah but but also there's been some great little collaborations like uh like i said like musicians and artists coming together and then if a fan wants to buy it and they feel that's worth a grand to them or two grand there you go you know it's just like that's yeah it's inter interesting times definitely because i think yeah no and i think as well like this lockdown stuff like this has only accelerated in this lockdown. Streaming's accelerated, cryptocurrencies have accelerated, online art like that, and people's willingness just to embrace.
like a decentralized kind of culture. I think that's um I think I think that's one upshot that's came out that came out of this pandemic as well. Like, you know, so like it's accelerated what was gonna happen from home shopping to Amazon to streaming to like we were working on a thing with Charlotte, like uh, for trolls. It was just a w- weird video for like trolls, the uh the film Warner. Who was it with? I can't remember who it was with. It was one of the biggies, Universal or something. I can't remember. Like, yeah, uh, but anyway. All the cinemas shut down, and Trolls was the first one to drop a hot, like a blockbuster on streaming. And uh, when they did it, um, all the cinemas blackballed that, like I can't remember who it was, Paramount or something. They blackballed all that, like uh, production house. They said we're not going to show it. if you if you drop this film online, we're just going to not show any of your films in the next uh, for the next couple of years or whatever. Like, and all the cinemas came together to try and like blackball the people who were making that. Trolls film and Trolls dropped it and they just cleaned up. You know, they they it was expensive, it was like 14 quid. But at the same time, I thought that's pretty expensive. But they it was one of the highest rated like first week box offices for for a film, you know. That wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for the pandemic. Yeah. And that's the thin end of the wedge for home cinema, you know. What I'm saying, like, you know, even talking to the guy in the Indian, he said, like, now everything's just online. He said, he said, he said he can't even see. People coming back to the restaurants after uh, he said they're doing better business that they're they're busier. But he said he can't see. He said like their clientele before was people who were in their thirties and their forties and they come in, they sit down and have a meal. He said now they have a whole new customer clientele who are like younger and they're ordering online. And mm. he says he doesn't even know if the restaurant trade as he knows it for him is going to come back. You know, so this whole last year has accelerated so much stuff in so many facets of technology and as designers we're always going to interface with that we're always going to be like called upon to to put a visual facade on whatever that's going to be you know to to, to get the message out there so mm-hmm. like yeah so just um, Charlie, just fast forwarding from um going back to fluid and then fast forwarding up to where you are when you launched at art club yeah 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 what was that process was that just a, was that just a desire to go out on your own did that was just well, a I was, I was working on a lot of big campaigns and uh, the main art director had left to go to Japan in the, in, the, in the agency. So it was just me and this one other art director and I was working a lot on the music stuff and he was working a lot on the game stuff because he had a bit more CGI skills. And eventually, after two or three years, I was I had working on one project from One Direction, which was a really large project. And at the time, it was like the biggest band in the world. They sold at Wembley two or three times over, like went down to the final show with their Wembley and stuff. And it was massive. It was just this huge, and uh, from that point, that was like, as far as a design campaign within the music industry, that was the largest in the world at the time, you know, from like all the different formats, all the different things, the rollout in all these different countries, everything from animated billboards and Times Square to like bloody 1D entire days of activations and shit. Yeah. So after I'd done that at this agency, me and uh, my girlfriend, Charlotte, who, I'm not going out with anymore, uh, but we still work together. Um, both of us worked on that project and we we're like, holy shit, man, this is like the biggest, one of the biggest projects in the world. And we managed to, we didn't manage to get out between me and her and then hiring in other freelancers. And I think at that point I was just like, you know, I've been there a long time and I was getting into doing my own design, which was a little bit more offbeat. I, like I didn't do a lot of work with like, uh, techno artists because I was used to promote techno nights so I was doing a lot of work that was just a little bit more left field that I wouldn't have got away with in that agency but also I knew that that work was only paying 500 quid or a grand for a sleeve so I just knew that like um I never would have been able to run them jobs through the agency you know I never would have been able to get those clients in it and it, it to pay so but I knew that for me I'm outside on my own to do a project for like a grand for you know or like two grand for a sleeve that was that was a viable for me on my own so um yeah so kind of like I just took the decision that I'm just going to leave and uh, work for myself so uh and that, that was it and then I, I was under a non-compete which was a little bit tricky because the music industry is just three people really it's Warner, Sony and Universal so I couldn't work for any of those music people in any capacity. And they own everything. They own every sub-label, like, you know, you hear of like Jive or Virgin or all these ones. They're all under that subgroup with that one thing. So I was thinking, oh, no, this first six months, I can't really touch any music industry stuff. That's big label stuff, you know, um, which is a little bit prohibitive. But 
in a way it was a blessing because I just got an email from Red Bull in Ireland a friend of mine just totally random they were going to do a festival a friend of mine was at an agency the agency couldn't do it he said here do you want to just do this it could be up your street next thing I got in with Red Bull Ireland did this huge big festival for them in Belfast which is a whole like it was a massive first job from there I just started getting more jobs from Red Bull and essentially the first year was just doing a lot of big projects for Red Bull and then after that I did a project with uh, Sony for Everything Everything, a band. And that was quite an alternative kind of thing. And they were really nice guys from Manchester. And the album just got loads of great reviews. And the artwork was like in all them kind of top 10 lists. Well, I had a bit more time on my hands then. So you can kind of go after getting your shit in creative review. And you can mm. do the PR and do the press and push it out there a bit. You know, now we don't really have as much time. So, you know, I, I kind of pushed it a bit. And then, um, and then uh, Ed Sheeran's people got in touch, um, which from Warner, which was cool. And I went in and had a chat with them. And I had a chat with them as a total outlier, as in like, you're a curveball coming in here. But when I went down and had a meet with them, I was like, nah, like I've been in this shit for like 10 years, man. Here's everything I've done. I've rolled out all these massive campaigns and stuff. They're like, okay, cool. We just thought you had done that everything, everything artwork. And you were just this weird... <laughs> Liner, they'd seen you know they'd seen stuff I'd done for Nave Out and stuff I'd done for Perk Tracks and you know like it was very like warp records y style stuff. So they'd seen just quite like challenging visuals and they said let's try and maybe as a curveball put in some challenging visuals. So um so they gave us the brief for the divide album and the brief was really simple. It was just like the divide sign, the color is blue. But like we went in, we just went all these different like iterations and things and it in 3D and it as collaged and you know because I worked in an agency and shit like to bang out like 50 concepts or whatever it was just like no problem and I had the marketing background and stuff and I was familiar with all the work and what's going on and everything before so and then off the bat we won that pitch which we'd won loads of other pitches and done other stuff as well but like once we won that one and then did like that was a massive campaign then like that was just a global like it's yeah. still just in the top 40 and that, that was everything from like entire tube station takeovers to Times Square banners to buses to, you know, like lyric videos that have billions of views and all this kind of shit. Like, so once we did that, then it was like, right, fuck it. Now I'm on the map myself, you know, with my own agency, my own thing. Mm. And that's it. And really, once you do something like that, everybody just takes note in the music industry. Because like I said, it's a small, it's a small yeah. circle. So, you know, but I think it's, yeah, so that's it. And then... But I still do loads of like commercial weird bits as well. I've just done a little thing with Voxy Mobile. Just did a little, uh, might be doing a thing with Road Safety Ireland, just with like all these animated texts. Cause like, I've just have friends who work as directors and they're directing a, a thing for that. So like, you know, I don't know if that's going to happen. They're, they're pitching on that. Like, um, I think I was talking to the guys from the Jesse Casual about doing something there yesterday as well. I don't know if that's going to come off, but like they have this idea. I can't really talk too much about that. And then this one JK we're doing is going to be a big shoot as well. So once you're in it and you're in the thick of it, I was shitting it though when I was leaving my job thinking, oh, work isn't going to come in, you know, or I'm not going to do this or like, you know, like it's going to be hard. But like, you know, I think you know yourself when it's time time to leave leave a place. And it wasn't that the place I was working was bad. It was great. But it was just like, there was other projects I wanted to take on. Like this one job I'm doing at the moment with this whole thing and this police van and organizing a fucking riot and shit like, and, you know, like this production end of things. That's not something that they ever did. That, that's I'm interested in, but it's not something that they ever did in the other agency. You know what I'm saying? They wouldn't have got, got their hands dirty with that. They would have just said, we're not going to do that because we're going to have to charge our time. We're going to have to mark it up. And then by the time we mark up that person's time, it's not going to be worth our time to do that. Do you know what I'm saying? So, so there's things I just want to do as at, in my own agency and, and myself, I you know, make films and animate stuff and, you know, just, just do projects that like have a 500 pound budget. That's just a weird yeah. alternate electronic thing. And you just, I just, just that flexibility wasn't there in, in, a, in a larger agency setting. Okay. I think a lot of people they get to a certain age or a certain desire just to be able to creatively express themselves fr freely. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. Know, you direct everything, don't you? It's from how the business is run to who you work with to the project. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and it's just like there's a time just where you need to just step it up and start learning other things. You know, like in, in a small design agency, as it like even your earning potentials, it is a certain amount. You know, you you you, you can hit that like 
whatever, 30, 40 grand mark, but then like you're never going to get past that if you're working for somebody else. He's always going to stop there. And whereas when you're working for yourself, you, you know, you can, you just have more control over your own finances. And when you've more control over your own finances, then you can have more control over your creativity because then you go, that buys you time. And that buys you like, okay, I can do this project for not a lot of money because it's interesting to me, you know, because I've done a project for Bacardi and I've got X amount for it. So like that puts time in the bank to, to explore other, other avenues, you know, but I am lucky in the fact that I really love pop music and I really love electronic music. and I really love that whole thing. So I get just as much enjoyment out of a big Ed Sheeran project as I do out of like a small electronic thing, you know, kind of why there's no, you know, like, you know, like we're just totally in for it, like, you know, on whatever, you know, and like, I think people look at pop music and I think they, the people who live in that pop world, it's a whole world of, of people and producers and styles and, you know, like it's, it's, it's a whole world, you know, and I think people look at it and go, oh yeah, they dismiss it sometimes, but like, you know, and they dismiss it as manufactured music and stuff, but like there's so many, even though it is manufactured and it is an industry, there's so many amazing creative people working in that music sphere that's just amazing to work with them all the time. It's just so inspiring, you know, like to meet amazing musicians or amazing film directors or amazing animators. Uh, and just like, you just vibe off that because you just raise your game. You just go like, I've got this meeting with X, Y, and Z. I'm just going to be fucking bring them A game. That's it, you know, kind of way. So like you just rise up to it, you know, yeah. when you're in an agency, you are just going in and doing your job to a degree, you know, and you don't really feel that, you know, there's a point where, you just feel I'm just sitting here doing my job and like, you know, you go home at the end of the day and, and, and that's really it. And that, now I took it on as way more of a job. You know, I, I was there all the time. I was like, you know, I never left the office and shit. Like, but at the same time, you know, if you love it, you just want to do it. And that's, that, that's it. You know, I don't, I don't look at it as, as work, you know, kind of like, I got to, you know, I'll have to spend this weekend with my girlfriend, but like, I would just as easily be designing up that plan. Yeah. Fun, you know and i wouldn't give a shit i just like yo just let, let me at it you know so like i'm more disappointed about having to spend the weekend with you yeah yeah ah no 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 she's a legend she's amazing so like yeah but she's she is understanding as well you know what i'm saying which is good yeah. you know and she's she's in, she she like she, you know she is really cool and understanding and she just like she knows i like it and stuff and it's cool yeah. i'm saying so but yeah so, so so that's kind of how i went from yeah that was the transition but like it was a like I'll make it sound like it's really easy, but like, it, it, you know, it wasn't like I had to spend a year, like I had to buy a house. This is my house. So like, it's just a big studio thing. Like, uh, but like, it's uh, like, it's more of a live work thing. Like uh, somebody sits there and there's like a desk here as well in a bookshop. But like, um, like I had to buy a house before I left because I didn't know what my financial situation was going to be. And I, and I would never have got a mortgage if it wasn't for that. And then, so I spent a year trying to save for the house and then I spent another year or so like saving money to leave to go freelance. But also when I was saving money, I was working all these small jobs because in my mind, I thought, I thought in my head, I would start off doing all these small jobs, for maybe 500 quid, 600 quid, and then to build up and then I get more and more. And like in my freelance time, I was building music projects up where I was doing like bigger labels and bigger labels and I was getting like maybe two grand, three grand per sleeve. And I was thinking, oh, uh, and then when I leave my job, then these will just sustain me. But it didn't really happen like that. It kind of happened that like I was given big job after big job after, you know, like I was given more big projects as opposed to nibbling at bits. I didn't, cause I didn't really know how it was going to pan out, you know? So like it was a hard time those two or three years before I left when I knew I wanted to leave. But I knew that if I'm to try and like, you know, obviously, you know, buy a house, which I don't think a, a mortgage provider wouldn't have given you that that shit, which is, you know, because I'm like, you know, in my like late thirties. So I was thinking I need to do that. And then I also was thinking I didn't know how the work would pan out. You know what I'm saying? I didn't know how how I'd never I'd never I've never done new business. I've never sent a new business email, which is mad. Yeah. But like, you know, like just. Uh, just just the uncertainty you know what i'm saying like your mind just you're just racked with nerves because you're just thinking oh shit what happens if this money doesn't come in and that comes in or you're doing a project and you go oh what happens if this fucks up and like you know we don't get paid or some shit like none of that has ever happened it's all been really touch wood smooth plain sailing you know kind of like, and 
I think it's about taking on shit that you're a little bit nervous with and it's outside your comfort zone, but not taking on risks. And I think you can only know that, you know, you got to know, I'm not going to take on a video for Ed Sheeran because I know there's just amazing Hollywood directors that he can get in, you know, I'm not going to raise my hand and say, yeah, 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 we'll take that on, you know, but let's say it's a smaller artist that we know we can get a good DLP, we can write a good treatment and we can do a good thing. And like, you know, there's just a, a reasonable budget. Like we can go, yeah, 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 no, we'll take that on. So I'm saying like, you know, you know, it's about knowing where your limits are as well. And I think after working for about 10 years, you kind of know I can bite that off or I could do that or, you know, or I'm going to leave that to the pros, you know what I'm saying? Or that's something I want to get involved with, you know? And I, and I think it's only after working for a long time and knowing where your limitations are, you know, like, and seeing, seeing how all these other facets operate as well, you know, like I think at the moment you need to just be aware of how digital marketing works, how animation works, how video works, how design works, how people experience things as users. You know, you need to just be aware of all that stuff. And that shit, when you go in as a designer, early doors, like you're just, you're trying to get to grips with the programs and the tools. You know, you're not thinking the, the next, you're not thinking out there. You're thinking like macro, you mm -hmm. know, whatever the fuck it is, micro, macro. You're thinking what's in front of you. You're thinking artwork this, you're thinking bleeds, you're thinking DPI, you're thinking all that really low you just that, that base design you're on the design base of starting off and then as you go through you go right what's you you'll understand the structure in the studio then you'll start to understand how design is received out in the real world then you'll have to start to understand the design clients relationship and how that whole universe works you know yeah. i think you know some people are lucky enough that they just they they get that intuition from the get-go you know what i'm saying you see some people and they just intuitively just understand and know and then other people you know it's different for everybody some people will be great have be great have great ideas but they'll just be shit at the technical stuff mm -hmm. you know and other people would be great at, at timeline based stuff and animation and na narrative but won't understand you know visual culture or they might just not understand culture and society as well. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, a lot of time we don't break designers come in in that old agency and we go, uh, so do you know anything about video games? And like, not that I was a big video game buff. They'd just be like, no, no. Yeah. Go, well, we got to do this zombie game. Go, oh yeah, what's a zombie? And you go, like, okay, right. You know, and, like, it's just like some of that. You need, you need to have a, a knowledge of like, the design is always going to interface off whatever is out there, whether it be sp football, sport, video games, music, you know, like you're always going to be working like with, with, with the subject matter, you know? So like, uh, and, and it's, it's, it's just known how to interface them two things and how to get the best out of your skills, what the client wants and it landed in the world as well, you know, like, cause it's got to land with the Zetgeist. And as much as designers, we think that we're just out there and we're mavericks and shit. We are, it, it's very, it, it's almost like fashion. And when you step back from it and you look at like design from the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, you know, look at all that Dior era, you know, there's, 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 there's times in design that are like clearly flanked by visual style. And you're going to see it now. Like it's even more accelerated now with, the, with Instagram. There's a total acid graphics instagram style you know of like cgi stuff and you know like you, and you do operate in that framework you know as well because clients want design that looks new and that looks of the time and clients can't articulate that but they see all this other shit and they go this is what's going on visually we want something cool but like we want to look part of the now you know so like and i think as a designer you're always going to be like unless you're like a Daniel E. Talk or somebody who just works more on that like weird frame of like conceptual design that doesn't really have to adhere to any kind of like aesthetic that's out there, you know. But yeah, it's it it's interesting. But also like again, there is no rules as well. You know, if you, if you have a weird style and you know like like that Braulio Armado guy, you know Braulio that guy, he, he, you know he just has that interest in just. Like now that is a style, people are doing that as a style. But when he started rocking that, it was just like really quick, 
looking sketches that were digital but like just felt awkward and weird and like stretch things and photocopy things but like he's been an art director in like New York for years and shit you know and like was the don of Portuguese design for years and like there was all these electro artists that came up like Moulin X and all these guys from Portugal he designed all that shit for them as well so in you know, he doesn't just, you don't just land there and just be, oh, I'm just doing these quirky fucking letters and stuff and these weird animations, you know, like, he's been through the whole thing of that up-and-coming designer, and then he's worked at big agencies, then he runs a bookshop thing, so he's aware of it all, you know, and, like, he's got his flow down, his style, but, you know, he, he sits outside that maybe to a degree, you know, like, he's got his own unique style, but then that becomes a style, yeah. you know, and then, like, it's it's a weird, it's like when Designers Republic, where we did their thing, it was unique, and then that just became the thing. And then everybody was doing that kind of style shit, you know, and then and it moves on, you know. And, like, um, yeah, it's just, like, uh, and that, that, that is one of the weird things about design. I think now it's more homogenized. You know, now you see more and more shit that looks the same because everybody's just copying shit on Instagram. And that's where everybody's eating, feeding from the one trough as far as Instagram goes. And that's where everybody's inspiration is coming from. Whereas before people would have not had the same book. So they would have not had the same, you know, they, they, they would have, you know, like it's just people are all feeding from that one trough of Instagram. Tumblr offered a little bit more variation. There was a style there. There was people, there was pockets of people doing different things. There was one people doing this, that, the other, like there's another, there's another book marker tool called Arena. I haven't really started to use it, but it seems like a little bit more in-depth and developed mood boards, like Pinterest meets, I don't know, like a project management tool, but a lot of people seem to be using that now. And just like, just trying to find stuff that's off the beaten track, you know, that like, you know, it, it's going to be more interesting, you know, I think that's, uh, yeah. I think that's, uh, I think that's where design is. When I look at a lot of design at the moment, I think it's looking very, very samey. Yeah. you know just like literally just looks like you know that's not me getting old because i rep i know what good design is but i just see all the, the younger crew just copying the same shit and i'm just kind of going but you know what i did that as well when i first started people like Toki Doki and all these vector things and like um rins and and all these really clean crisp vector flowy lines were in and i just fucking drank the kool-aid man i just was like oh that's cool I didn't really understand the whole bigger picture and I just went for that. I just saw, seen a few design books, a few bits. I was just like, yeah. And that's, that's what I did at the start. And that's how I learned, you know, just by copying stuff, you know? So I had my own style. I think that's part of the process, isn't it? Is understand, you know, you have to go through, through a lot of that sort of stuff to understand, you know, just what, what you're trying to achieve, I think. And then yeah. you actually find your own way. Don't you feel comfortable about what you do? You don't really give a monkeys about what anyone else thinks. You sort of, yeah, yeah. You just, totally, you find totally. your own path, don't you? Yeah, no, totally, you know, so like, you know, but, you know, maybe, maybe with the amount of feedback you can get now really quick, like the feedback loop has increased. So you put something out, it's like, boom, you get a lot of comments or you get a lot of likes or you immediately can have a conversation with somebody because that feedback loop is quicker now um, in, in the digital world we live in, you know, maybe people get off that first base quicker. So maybe people are just there and they're doing what they do and it's like copying everything else that's going on. But maybe because that feedback loop is quicker and they're seeing other stuff, maybe they go, oh, I'm just doing the same shit here. I need to fucking up the game. Yeah. Okay. But the people, you know, people say you're only as good as the obscurity of your sources. You know, there's very rarely I'll see something that I'm like, I've not seen that before. That's a remix of something else. But sometimes you do see something like somebody's taken some idea from a, a mad 60s fucking film or some shit or somebody's you know just just taking inspiration from something and they brought it forward as right and it's like you know and when people do that right they can really do it right you know what i'm saying i, I love that uh, willow perrin agency like uh like uh like it's a wopa now or something like they're just really great holistic a agency and i think that's the way things I think that like they're a real future face and agency in music as far as they do loads of music work, but they do like, they think of the stage show, they think of the stage design, they think of the videos, you know, they think of all that. Like and, mm. and that live experience now in music and events, that's so important. Like for, for brands to connect with people, like digital, 
like you're just on that one emotional plane when you're looking at digital stuff. Like your your brain activity is probably just the same as when you're watching fucking TV. It's when you're just yeah. doing scrolling. So like for brands to build that like emotional connection, those events or those things need to be. I'm not I'm not saying brands. I'm saying like artists as well. Those touch points with reality need to be now hyper real, you know. And you see the stage shows that they've done, like the stage shows now are just getting fucking crazy, like floating Lamborghinis and all kinds of shit. Like, and like it's, it's a big part, of it, you know, but also the campaign when we, we start thinking about it, you want to, you want to be thinking from the, the Instagram ad to the stage show. You want to be thinking that whole lineage of how this person is going to interact with that campaign, you know, from like their first Instagram jpeg they see to apex twin in the print works and yeah. how everything's just fucking going off that was what we did for a red bull in london you know but like that whole journey needs to be wrapped and needs to be like consistent and just be needs to just you know just you know that's well i think it does <laughs> that's the, that's yeah. what yeah. i think that's a, a good place to end it johnny if that's okay yeah he just actually michael's just asked if you can repeat the name of that studio that you just mentioned. Oh, the studio was one second. Hang on that. Bear, bear with me. I'll just put a link there in the uh just put a link to the studio in the uh in, in the okay. thing. Yeah, yeah. but like there's there's a lot of it goes goes like uh yeah, there's there, there, there's definitely just a new school of studio that's working in video, on, online stuff and the visual. You know, there's a whole. It's a it's a really interesting time. I, I could talk. I think I, I don't know. We got more loads of real tangents and stuff. You know, and, and if anybody has any questions, really quick, they want to ask, just just fire away, and I'll, I'll answer them in a, in a word. But yeah, I think um, yeah, I guess I guess that's it. You know, I think. Yeah. Uh, I, I could probably talk on any any topic from stage shows to fonts, <laughs> you know. Like, yeah, going to be a good thing to follow up in future. I've ever you know break down these talks. We're finding there's a few few people you know asking for specifics, um, you know, asking to talk about from studio's perspective, talk about portfolios or how they find work, all these sorts of things. So yeah, yeah, yeah we have yeah. these introduction chats, but then it's quite good to them. You know, design some more about very niche areas yeah, of what you're yeah, doing. Yeah, yeah, because because you know what, and like you just pick all this up as you go along. You don't even know. It's like we were caught, like we we're caught on this one project that we're doing at the moment. You know, and like and like we are just like holy shit, man. We're just dropped in here. We're like directing directors. We're directing the ads. All this stuff. We're, we're vehicle graphics set design stage and location props all this fucking shit just shit you know and you don't even know how you know it but you've just been doing it like well i'm nearly 40 now and i've been in this shit since i've been 16 you know so like it's 25 years almost i'm just on the coal face every day you just do pick these things up you take it for granted of all yeah, the stuff. I know about you. you just wing it most i do it i sort of say yeah i'll do that and i'll do it and i find out that i can't do it but i'll learn on the job and yeah you do you do there's, there's, there's an element to that as well and that's fun you know i do yeah. like that yeah that's fun you know that, 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 that's that's a fun part of it also you know? it's all too easy isn't it? you just become boring isn't it? you've got to challenge yourself haven't you? definitely definitely no but uh no fair play on uh getting the design festival together and stuff and hopefully you'll see more from what i need to yeah, yeah. Just, you know, check out some more bits of it and like just kind of um yeah just have i've just been so busy i haven't even managed to check in with the, the other talks and stuff but yeah, yeah. Some people on the lineup and stuff so i must uh when you do get them online are you, are you gonna stick a link to them or yeah yeah yeah, yeah well we've got them all in the house at the minute we'll just figure out the best way of putting them out they quite like it subscriptions and all these sorts of things but like you really it's just getting the time of the day to find it the mates do it properly so we'll get them all out there available for everybody and um until then we'll uh, we'll keep in touch mate and we'll um, we'll do some more stuff in future yeah definitely man yeah yeah cheers for getting us in man and just like yeah hopefully we'll do some bits in the future and uh fair play on getting together and i look forward to seeing the rest of the design bits you're gonna do excellent well, thank you for everyone for tuning in i've all have a great weekend and we'll catch up soon yeah and if i have any questions i threw my email in the thing there yeah so if anybody has any questions on my phone numbers on the thing just you can just message or ring or whatever, and I'll try my best to uh, to try and you know feedback and stuff, you know, and it should be all good.
Brilliant. Excellent. Cheers, Johnny. Take care, mate. Okay. See you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <clears throat>